Anywhere. Hello everyone, welcome to, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Meeting. Today we are the 10th of September 2024. So around the virtual table, we are five. Uh, myself, Damien Duportel, Jay Reddy, Mark Waite, Stefan Merle, and Kevin Martins are all here today. Welcome folks. Uh, let's get started with announcements. First, a reminder that last week, we had a successful but delayed, yes, uh, weekly release. So that weekly release is the first to embed Spring Security latest version with GTE. Uh, I don't remember the numbers, but yeah, a lot of hard and complex changes that are needed by the project. Um, we delayed off one day as a reminder, as uh, requested by some contributors, because they wanted to take time to review one last change in order to have this change as part of this release, just in case the next LTIS uh, baseline selection could have selected, it was an atomic change. So not a problem for us. We were able to successfully deliver the same day one weekly and one uh, LTS. So thanks everyone for this. And we have been running that 2.47500 uh, version since now six days on infra CI and weekly.ci with no problem. Um, even better, we were able to catch an issue. So it was already fixed when we mentioned it to the team working on this spring security updates. They already realized that some plugins such as LDAP plugin required an update. So we were on the edge, we caught the issue. They confirmed, yes, we know, they didn't have time because we were too quick to update, but they didn't have time to advertise it to us. But they gave us immediately the fix. We applied it and it worked. That led to a changelog update as far as I can tell. I've asked Basil if, you, if it made sense, looks like it did, to help eventually other users. Other than that, nothing else to add on this uh, issue for me. Is there... Are there any questions, things to add specifically, or is that okay for everyone? I guess I do have one item to add. 2.476 includes one additional change related to Spring Security 6 compatibility. Uh, so it's an important release. Uh, the the plugin that the two or the two or three plugins that had the issue are relatively low volume plugins, less than 5,000 installations. Uh, but we will likely choose either 476 or 477 as the LTS baseline. We should actually, we should put in an item in the announcements. I'll put it in, Vivian, about okay. new next LTS baseline selection, because that's an important thing coming. Cool. Thanks, Mark. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to write correctly words and words don't want to have too much letters. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, so the that new release 2.476 uh, started on time, so we will watch it until completion and deliver it to Infra CI uh, and Weekly CI as usual. Stefan, don't forget to update the plugins because I'm I don't know which are the low level plugin uh, installed plugin that Mark mentioned, but if by any chance we are running one of these. I believe we should uh, deliver an image with core and plugins updated. Ooh, uh, yeah. I will merge both and get that image. Yes. Yeah, and and no worry, we are not using any of those plugins. Cool. Cool. Thanks, Mark. Um. So that's all for the weekly announcements. Something else to add, folks? No. So just a quick. I uh, mentioned that we also released the new LTS, the dot two, last week during Wednesday, no issue. Everything went fine. Um, we updated all the platform by reflex because we were already uh, updated for weekly. However, Mark, uh, can you double check that the, the task list for the release has been properly done because I haven't seen any issue on the desk about updating to LTS. And I believe creating that issue is usually done by Chris or you. So I don't know if uh, Alex, uh, maybe he jumped that specific task because it was already done. I don't know, but just I, I suspect let's so. double check. I, good, I will double check. I'll do that while we're proceeding with the meeting. Thanks. Um, that's all for the LTS release. 
I'm going to mention the next LTS baseline first. Anything else about the current LTS release? No? Okay, so as Marker wrote, next LTS baseline will be selected 18 September. So in eight days, we will select which new LTS will be delivered in 11 weeks, if I'm correct. Or maybe, or maybe less. Uh, I'm mathematic, you know. Yeah, it will be. <laughs> it, it will be delivered thirtieth of October, twenty twenty four. However many weeks it is till that. Okay, cool. I, and and I, I can put that into our notes. That's a good thing for us to be reminded of. Is what what is the actual date? Uh, yes, a bit below uh, line forty seven. We have the next LTS item. Oh, oh, got it. You. Very good. Okay, thanks. And. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that next LTS release will should have Spring Security. That's yes, written. So that transitively, correct. it means it will have GDK 17 as mandatory baseline, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. Require GDK 17. No, no worries for us. We are already using GDK 17 for the controller and agent everywhere for running the agent or controller processes. But uh, yeah, that might be a lot of incoming issues and questions. Um, that's all for the next LTS baseline. Something else to add? Oh. Nope. So oh, just oh, a yes, I, yep. I take yep. it back. One more. Yep. I will likely be the release lead for the, the 30th of October. I, I fully intend to be the release lead for 30th of October LTS. Cool. Uh, it's just there's so much going on there. I, I, I've got lots of personal reasons to be involved as the release lead if they're willing to allow it. So you can already write somewhere in your head, but I will remind you, we will have Docker uh, repository changes on the controller image in order to definitively drop the GDK 11. Ah, thank you. Good reminder. Yes, thanks. Um, next announcement item. So last week uh, we had a suspicious pull request opened. Uh, we took some time because many it was weekend to detect this and share this team wide. But Sunday we ended up everyone was aware and working on it. So we have contained the suspicious pull request impact. That was a smart attack. And yesterday we received on the private uh, Jira dedicated to Jenkins security, a few uh, reports about this. These weren't attack. These were pen tester security specialists, and they reported on everything they did, everything they were successfully able to break or retrieve or leak. They didn't communicate on the failed attempt, do. Uh, and there were different attack, mainly on towards CI Jenkins IO and infra CI Jenkins IO. Um, infra CI Jenkins IO has not been uh, successfully compromised, but it was a close one. And that's the takeaway. This suspicious pull request are pointing things we were expecting to be leaked, such as the launchable token use on CI Jenkins IO. It's really easy to extract it. They provide solution for remediation, but our, right now, most of these elements we consider the, the efforts in order to apply this remediation will slow down contributors. So it's better to accept that every token on CI Jenkins, so you every secret, every credential can be compromised at any time. As such, most of their issue has been closed. I hope with an explanation, I need to double check. Yes, oh, uh, so I'm yep. a JIRA administrator and there, okay, uh, cool. there has been a, an explanation provided and the security team is communicating with uh, with the, the, the contributor. Cool. Um, I know that I have to remind and reminding them what team already did on one of the closed pull requests. Uh, please let us know in advance. We will keep it secret and we will we won't do anything about this because that's really interesting to see this kind of penetration testing on a public good such as the Jenkins Infra. Mm -hmm. But doing that without preventing us during the weekend, I mean, that's not cool, honestly. I can see Tim and I agree on it's a kind of attack. 
because right. we are not really sure if they are doing something honest or not. So next time, please let us know in advance, even secretly. The Jenkins security uh, uh, can uh, is private. Every issue or mail sent to their mailing list or repository is secret and they will share the information with us. But don't do this out of the wild without letting the contributor know, please. Mm -hmm. um, good result though. The attack, the attack was very smart. It showed that we have good protection layers, but we still have improvement to make to be really, really cool. Um, especially I'm happy with the work we, we did on separating agents from controller for infra CI, for instance, because by using physically separated devices and networks, we protect ourselves by nature. Uh, also, our way of managing credential per repository clearly limits the scope of the attack. Um, but we see some actions. We will have one action on CI Jenkins IO. Um, I, I didn't create an issue yet. I wanted to raise the topic with all of you. Uh, CI Jenkins IO has Docker Hub tokens. There are two kinds of tokens. There is one read only that can be removed since we now have a registry mirror. So no need to authenticate. Immediate action that we can do at any time. And we have a push token. As part of as their attack, they were able to retrieve that token successfully, which is expected but annoying. And that token allows to push images on Jenkins for Eval Docker Hub organization. Um, we we had that idea months ago already, uh, every year when we renew the subscription. The question is, do we really need this organization in 2024? My proposal, and I will write it down as an issue, is we I will want to propose to decommission that organization. First, that will allow us not to have any right token at all on the CI Jenkins IO. And second, it will help Docker. That's a tiny part of the of the work for that, but it will help them as part of the common good. Why keeping gigabyte of images that could be balked by someone attacking when the real goal was, hey, I got a pull request on one of the few Docker images on Jenkins, and I want to share the image built from that pull request. It's a kind of incremental feature except it's never garbage collected and serve low purpose. I haven't seen this use since the past two years. So maybe it's because the way we started to clean up all of our images or the way we walk or losing contributor, I don't have an explanation for that. But my proposal is, hey, now if we have the need in the future, we can use GHCR registries, which are per repository on GitHub. It's free, it's public. If you have a GitHub account, you need a GitHub account to pull the image, which clearly is different and it will avoid maintaining that organization on Docker Hub. So I'm gonna go with this proposal and send it to the Jenkins dev community list and we'll see the results. Uh, the goal will be, A, let's remove everything from CI Jenkins IO, but not only. I like that. I, I, rem I... It's long enough ago that I used Jenkins for eval that I don't remember why I used it. So yeah, I think that's very reasonable. When it was created, it was early on the Docker image and the Docker hub history, and it, it was filling a need. Mm -hmm. But I haven't seen that need since the past two years. And we have new tools that are way more secure for that. Use HCR instead, if needed. Uh, CI Jenkins IO, remove credentials. Um, I'm gonna raise the question privately about some of the proposal for remediation on um, on some of the repositories uh, from the security researcher. Particularly, the, the, the attack was really smart and it was trying to abuse POM XML file. Mm -hmm. And I believe the build, at least the build plugin shared library could be improved to load the POM XML file using the read trusted. Well, but, I, uh, but if it does, then I can't change POM files in a, in a pull request. And, and that's, if, that, if that blocks are, Dependabot. 
Uh, the Pandabot can be added, I believe. The, the Pandabot can be added as maintainer of the repository, allowing it to update the PUM XML. You, uh, yeah. Letting a robot up. Well, let's have but, the conversation separately. Yeah, then. exactly. But the idea is here we have ways of adding layers of protections mm. uh, to avoid risks. Right. And 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 I, I think that that your observation there is the right one. Let's look for layers that might be added. I'm not I don't immediately see any for that particular attack. But I see but, a feature proposal for uh, GitHub branch or plugin. Huh. Um, okay. So it, it has to be validated. I don't know if GitHub API express the um, uh, or show us the ability of hey, that is the first time contributor. But I would be really interesting on having a trust, uh, um, a build strategy, or at least a build discovery, that will rely not on the are you admin or not, but that will be how oh, you are someone that already committed on the repository, so I'm gonna trigger the build of your pull request and then apply the usual trusted and trusted uh, protection layer. Hmm. But the decision, the strategy for discovering or building a given pull request based on is it the first time contributor or not. That's the default with GHA. If you create a new repo and enable GHA, someone upon a pull request and GHA workflow are not started. And I got a second, uh, a second one, which is, hey, like GHA, I will want to be able, but not by default, to disallow usage of uh, access to the credential if you're not an admin or maintainer of the repository. So any with credential call on the pipeline will say, hey, no error. Or give the credential empty. That's the default behavior of GHA. Mm. So maybe that could be two feature security features, um, not widely used by Jenkins user, but in our case, it will be useful. Mm. I like that. Yeah, so the, the with credentials thing sounds good the the attack can also be done by writing a test or by writing things in the c code called by a make file or so there there are many different layers of that that particular yep. vulnerability Sh that particular shared list. library is a very well yes. known exactly. security layer here absolutely on infra ci um so we have a few things uh first i was sure that the that we had um separated jobs with separated credentials between production deployment and uh, pull request. So we need to do that. It's quick and easy. Split website jobs pair from production main branch deployments. So, and when you say split, I'm not sure what does, do you mean have entirely... Uh, separates in two folders with two different multi-branch oh. okay. that one targets the pull request only and the other only the main branch. And we use the production tokens only on the production token one. Got it. Okay. Um, split website jobs and credential. Um, second thing is... Uh, we should start on both infra and then CI, but starting with infra, apply PSA, um, Kubernetes PSA to our container agents. Mm. Um, the goal is to, have, since they were able to run arbitrarily commands interactively from their VS code during uh, some times, they can try once they have, they have the ability to RCE inside the agents to do lateral attacks. In order to do lateral attacks, we are already protected from lateral attack to the Kubernetes API. That one is okay. However, we are not protected between containers. Applying PSA will block special abilities such as running a TCP dump, a network scan, port scan, ping, uh, S trace and everything, and they could block the attack, the tentative attack uh, on the host container. If you have a container breakout, then it can be worse. So PSA will be an additional layer of protection, just to be sure when we, we don't have a website pull request trying to attack a Terraform job. That's not enough, but that's an additional protection layer. And then we could apply this to CI Jenkins IO for the same reason. 
that has been requested since at least three years by Jesse Glick and Daniel on the security issue on the private one. So yeah, uh, we delayed due to PSP uh, being uh, uh, deprecated and PSA are recent in Kubernetes, but now we are there. And we did it with success on uh, other Jenkins distribution so that you'll walk out of the box for us. Split, uh, the second thing about splitting, I will want us to work on splitting in two node pools, two different subnets, the agents. We would have Jenkins agent, infra agents namespace and the Jenkins untrusted agents namespace. So two namespaces, two node pools, two different subnets. So at the hardware level, if you have a website for the pull request, then they cannot, absolutely cannot reach any of the other system. Namespace. Not... Stefan, does it make sense for you that's uh, that one? I believe so, but I prefer asking. Yes, yes, I'm worried about the cost for the node, new node pools, but uh, it's scaled to zero, so the cost is zero, except Net the time to create IM64. it. It's scaled to zero, even though Azure says it should not. It no worries. Okay. Um, I had one last. We we agree that splitting that name namespace is kind of the same of PSA. Absolutely not. That's a absolutely different, layer. distinct, and the only common point is Kubernetes here and infra CI. Mm -hmm. But the, we will uh, move okay. the discussion. These are immediate action we can take. Um, the action that has been, uh, uh, let's say, uh, remediation that we need to discuss right now, remediation actions. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry it takes time, but that one has been really serious. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, and it's important for Kevin as well as Mark. Uh, websites previews are disabled. Right. Each time there is a pull request on Jenkins IO on the website, you should see a check that should be red or yellow and never finishing or never even appear starting. Uh, we cannot deploy previews on all websites, Jenkins IO, but contributors and everything. I'm sorry, I forgot to communicate about this. Daniel reminded me about that earlier today. So my mistake, I'm sorry, uh, head full of too much things. We need to find a way to safely enable this. And the immediate actions here, we are mandatory for us, at least the first one, and then we can re-enable with lower risk, okay? Because what we discover is, this pull request on preview site has been an attack vector. What they tried failed because we uh, because Gavin uh, shaped the lint phase by every time downloading a binary overriding the existing one. And because we use npm CI instead of npm install, which means npm install dependencies from the log file instead of reading the package.json file, generate the log file and do something. If we would have run npm install as part of the pipeline, which is a bad practice in any case, that would have executed the malicious code and they could have gained access to an agent in infra CI. So, so does, that, does that hint to us one of the things should Jenkins core, for instance, if it's invoking npm, be sure npm install, be sure that it's invoking, invoking npm CI. Absolutely. I think uh, it's clean install or something. CI is just the acronym, but yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, so now we have medium term actions uh, because these are the short term. At least the first one split website jobs is mandatory. Medium term, uh, we need a shared library for the website, because all websites are have a, are almost the same. What changes the production deployment, uh, and eventually some require such as Jenkins IO a make file call. However, in that case, or at least read trusted, we need to use the read trusted function to protect us for the make file. And here it's different than the first discussion we had earlier about the POM XML. The POM XML is more complicated because it's needed most of the time as the 
the disagreement between Mark and High Show, it's not immediate. However, I don't see any reason why someone not a maintainer of Jenkins.io should have to change the make file. And if they do, there are other ways than just relying on the check. Mm -hmm. Because we want contributor to have a quick preview site when they change the content of the site. Then the rest is tooling and it's a special case. And we know that we don't want infra CI to validate the change on the make file. We want this to happen on CI Jenkins IO. And that's the same for all the other. The only goal of the pull request build for infra CI for this site is deploying the preview and eventually build it previously. So that one should help. Or find a non-infra CI way to deploy preview. That's the other solution. Mm, right. Netlify is able to build things. Or we could have an incremental service like, which will act as a proxy. Netlify or back to CI.io plus incremental like deploy web service. The idea of the incremental mm. web service is that in CI Jenkins IO, when you want to deploy an artifact generated by a pull request, you don't want CI Jenkins IO to have the token that allows writing and pushing artifact on artifactory. Instead, we have a pipeline library that say, hey, I want incremental on this one. It send a post request to our web service and the web service retrieve the artifact generated following the convention, which already restricts what an attacker could do. And the token is stored on the web service. It's never available on the build or the agent or the controller. So with the same pattern, if we could add on incrementals or build a new service, we could have a, a, a website deploy to something uh, uh, external websites. So the pipeline says, hey, I've built the website. It's linted. Everything is good. Then send a request and we download the expected file. That will allow us to move back the pull request build to CI Jenkins IO, better uh, visibility for contributors, and no need to run the pull request on infra CI, reducing the attack vector. But that one is require more work. So that's why I'm setting it as medium term action. Um, I don't see other actions here. So I've tried to uh, say early what I wrote on my notes, write it publicly as the first time. Now that the risk is, uh, is let's say, um, um, I forgot the English word. Now that we don't have any more immediate risk. So the attack was really smart, honestly, and I'm really right. happy with the outcome. Anything else to add or to clarify? No, I, I like I like the I like your suggestion that the responsibility should be very clear and explicit which things are executed where. And so in for CI not doing anything more than generate deploys of content changes is a is a subtlety that I had not considered. I think that's very wise. Okay, so then I can move on an upcoming calendar. Sorry, Mark, for you. Um, maybe if it's okay, I will jump the upcoming calendar because Mark has a hard early stop. I will want to speak about the update center mm. first. Great. So if it's okay for everyone, I'm going to jump upcoming calendar and cloud budgets. Uh, I will uh, go back to this later, folks, for you. And so we can immediately start on... Uh, the work that we were able to do uh, and then uh, the update center. Is that okay for everyone? Asynchronously. Asynchronously. So suspicious activity. I've closed the issue open by Alex. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, team, for noticing us about the problem, creating the issue that allowed me to respond really quickly uh, Sunday morning when leaving. So thanks also specifically to Tim because he spent quite some time with me double checking the attacks and validating that we didn't have any issue. So really happy to have your help. 
special thanks for Stefan for supporting me. Alf, Alf, uh, I've Alf done nothing. Bay, Alf I, Bay. I was there. I've done nothing. Yes, but you were you were there. You supported me, and you were able to help. Hopefully, we didn't had to, but many thanks. Uh, thanks, Jay, on keeping the update CLI YAML cleanups. Uh, at least three issues, improving tracking, improving the usage of update CLI, and training your brain to use update CLI to keep dependency updated. Great work. Honestly, I took it could, it should span uh, on two or three weeks because you are already busy and you did it so, so quickly. I really can be proud of you. So as we said, we postponed the release uh, as requested by Basil, but that has been done. And we had an account, um, account creation failed due to the IP of the requester on a, a deny list. So created manually and yeah, they are now going on using a, a maintaining a plugin. So thanks for that. We had a few not planned issue, uh, account or unrelated. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this one. And now about the update center. So we can release Mark. Uh, Stefan, the mic is yours on this one. Can you summarize what we did? And we, we were just watching our computer while doing the brownout. I mean, that was so easy. No, we, we, we had a few issues in the first uh, brownout. We discovered that we forgot uh, to, uh, to uh, plan uh, the migration for Jenkins dash um, org. No, it's not dash. It's if not I start org, by dash... the high level summary, it was successful. Yes, <laughs> but we're we're so good. I mean, it's always successful. No, but we yeah we forgot one little itchy thing, and uh, we discovered during the first run out that um, we had to improve our monitoring for Datadog because um, the let's say the old version, it's easier. Uh, the old version is uh, providing page with uh, um, error code 200, which is no error code and delivering the, the page, as, uh, whereas the, the new one with mirror bit is using redirection. So uh, Datadog was complaining because the error code was not 200. So uh, we had to improve the Datadog for the second uh, brownout uh, to make sure that we follow all the, the redirection and end to a 200. Um, it's working fine. We will uh, probably improve a little those, uh, those monitoring for the new uh, version. And we did also work to um, use Kubernetes to uh, manage the log digestion for Datadog for um, um, mirror bits and for the ingress to be able to read uh, uh, in a better way all the logs. And we discovered that we can do that as code, which is really powerful. So the, the brownout was good. We took some uh, uh, improvement from it. We're ready for a bigger one because as we said already, a brownout of one hour is, is way too, too little to make sure that we were okay with everyone as there is a cache in Jenkins UI of 24 hours. So we really need to have a bigger time span to make sure that everything is okay. Nice summary. Uh, I just want yeah, to show something. you, no, no, that's perfect. I wanted to brag a bit about the metrics. <laughs> yeah, that's, so... that's awesome. The metrics uh, on the new service uh, shows that uh, Mirror Bits and Apache receive a, a slight increase. But when I say slight, it's slight. So Mirror Bit is doing nothing because it's consuming way more resource to have the every five minutes you can see here in the memory. Every five minutes, Update Center runs and scan all mirrors again to provide new uh, index version. That one consume way more resources than serving the update center workload. Uh, you can note the the hole here. It's because uh, since we broke the update center, we forgot one DNS. Uh, time for us to recover the update center. No update center, almost no resource mem memory used. Uh, 
Uh, we see a slight increase uh, around 100 megabytes on Apache servers, the one that serves the redirections, so that's expected. But I mean, we have uh, 32 gigabytes uh, nodes, so we have plenty of memory available. So yeah, we see it was used, that's good. But no worries about the, the power required to run the service. Of course, as Stefan said, we will need to see if it's the same and it sustained the same during 24 hours straight. We saw an impact on the ingress as we expected, but now we have proof. The in, the, it's a bit more visible. As you can see, we jumped to an average of 200 millicores, so 20% of one core average CPU usage, and it jumped around 405, so let's say half a core. We have 16 core machines, so again, and we have allocated two full cores per pod. So here we are using uh, an aggregate of one CPU above four available for this service. That's the biggest service of the platform. So I'm really proud of that usage resource. It's really scarce and really efficient. So uh, now, based on what Stefan said and these metrics, uh, we are ready for a brownout of one full day. I got a proposal. I wanted to uh, say it from this Wednesday, starting at four uh, at two p.m. UTC until Friday, uh, third day. Sorry. So that means during the European afternoon Wednesday, Wednesday, uh, we switch back to the new system and then we wait twenty four hours to see if things are going on the right direction. Is there any need to clarification or any objection about that proposal and the, uh, the described results? That sounds no. good. So for this one, um, two success factors now, uh, three. Uh, metrics, uh, error logs, so again, we saw errors on 404 on the current update center. So the errors should be the same and the success should be the same. And billing. If we have one hour, we can start see a billing decrease if we look day by day on the AWS bill. And that's the last hypothesis. We want to see the billing to absolutely decrease. Otherwise, we, that means update center is not the, uh, the culprit, but it should be everything indicates it is. But we will see that only uh, until not until uh, Friday. We got twenty-four hour delay now. Uh, Forty-eight. So we won't know so until Monday. Monday. That's why I wanted Wednesday. Eventually Friday afternoon, we might have a view. Not sure. Okay. Depends on the AWS aggregation method. Um, something we detected: uh, pen logs during the brownout. So we okay. saw errors due to outdated Jenkins instances, of course, that are using the old system. But we saw a lot of requests which user agent is artifactory directed to update Jenkins IO. Which means people, there are some people running artifactory and instead of pointing it to the Jenkins artifactory to mirror it, I don't know why they are pointing to the update center. So maybe Artifactory as a feature of mirroring the Jenkins plugin, which I can oh, understand. Right. However, the requests we saw are clearly not Jenkins plugin. They are like groovy artifacts. They try to download jars. So all of these elements are 404, but my proposal will be, A, hey, it could be interesting to block the requests which user agent is Artifactory. That should be a quick one. We can revert it easily at the ingress level. And the answer um, 400 error, not a 404. But maybe it's not needed. I don't mm. know, because we see no impact on the ingress, so the ingress is already serving 404. Yeah, I'm, I'm hesitant to add that because I know of at least one case where a Jenkins user is actively mirroring their Jenkins plugins into their artifactory. But you said okay. these things are not plugins. 
But if we reject all requests where the user agent is artifactory, we would reject those requests as well. Absolutely. So maybe I'm a bit too strict and somehow the metrics are saying, hey, Apache need only 100 megabytes more for sustaining this rate. So if after the 24 hours brownout, we don't see any visible real life impact, we can say, hey, that's okay. Serving 404 errors doesn't use a lot of resource and doesn't cost so much. Hmm. Pointing at... Uh, the problem is more the artifactory uh, call that are not 404 and that for now are using bandwidth. Well, but but those are exactly the consumers I was describing, or at least they, they are asking for a valid artifact. They, in fact, may be caching it for a large organization that's behind them. Yes. And we want so to encourage them saving. to cache it. Right. So they could be saving. saving us bandwidth. Exactly. And we don't download artifacts from update Jenkins IO, so that cannot be our bandwidth when it's an HTTP 2.0.0 because the, the artifact are downloaded from get Jenkins IO. So what happened is their artifactory most probably is redirected to get Jenkins IO from which they get the, the, the HPI plugins. Yeah, that's already in the other mirror bits. And HTTP 4.0.4 errors we saw, they don't consume yeah, any bandwidth. No bandwidth or you need, I, I, I made the, the calculus uh, earlier this morning it means we would have to serve billions of billions of requests per day of error requests in order to reach uh, the amount of bandwidth we see. <laughs> so the bandwidth <laughs> come only from the JSON file. You, you have time to make that calculation? I mean, look. I wanted to be sure just, just in case, given the high volume here. Okay. So that's all for the update uh, center. I'm honestly really confident on uh, moving to this new service as we saw we need confirmation so next meeting we will we will have a go negotiation about definitively moving to the new system i forgot to say that we discovered that we had to improve the script because we we used update instead of aws.update for the host name for the old machine for the synchronization for updates no worries uh, i wrote it uh, and it's also in the ticket, and these are it's an internal issue. Eventually, forgetting forgetting the jenkinsci.org domain, which means during the first brownout, during 20 minutes more or less, uh, there were user errors if you were using the whole domain. They received 404 errors even on update center file. So that has been a 20 minute outage, mm. realistically. This did not happen during the second brownout and won't happen because we have fixed the problem immediately. So yeah, I feel confident. Once we will have migrated to the new system, we will start the discussion about, a hey, should we had a third update center mirror on the new AWS account? Should we start a Cloudflare mirror on China? Etc. But right now, I propose we focus on the brownouts this week and next week the final production move. Anything else? Okay. Um, I I will absolutely quickly jump on the upcoming calendar. Just a note: I still have a few issues to create about incoming uh, credential renewal. By the way. We have one that has been expired yesterday. Packer credential expired. So I have an issue to create and our J, our national J volunteered on working, fixing this. I we... already, I'm already done with creating all oh, this. Cool. Yeah. So thank Jay. Um, and that let us the transition to GDK 21 and 17 build feature for the uh, Windows SSH machine because that's the leftover. What's the status? Because right now you are blocked due to the Packer builds. So can you give us the summary? Yeah, so the last two weeks we spent uh, removing all definitions of default JDK from the Packer images. I'm audible, right? I don't want to waste my... Yeah. Oh, no, it's okay. So I'm just making sure. Yeah. 
so we are done with removing the default GDPR, which was prohibiting us from uh, from creating the Windows SSH templates on uh, trusted cert and infra. So right now there's a blocker of uh, the release of Packer images version 2.0.0, which uh, is required from all the changes because of all the changes that we've made for the last two weeks. So yeah, uh, as soon as this blocker is removed, we should be able to test the templates and uh, uh, close this issue. Backed by Packer expired financial cannot um, deliver 2.0.0. So, yep, it's blocked. So as soon as uh, Jay has finished the work on automating or at least uh, adding the pull request with update CLI for the credential expiration, we can renew the credential and then deliver 2.0 and then Jay can uh, validate the setup. Anything else to add? Any question? Nope, okay. Uh, next top level topic for us, a GeoIP database used for the mirrors, both Update Center and Get Jenkins IO are not updated anymore because please read the last uh, meeting notes. Stefan is working on it. So that's a subtask. Uh, he's working on a Kubernetes cron job which a kind of special pod that starts a regular interval as the name implies with cron and then stops. The goal of this thing will be, hey, let's download the database and then upload it to the shared volume using AZ copy. So we need a custom Docker image, we need a custom Helm chart and we need testing. So uh, Stefan is taking this in account. We need this extensive testing to avoid breaking the production. So yeah, uh, it takes a bit of time, but uh, uh, Stefan, I believe you have a working, successful working Docker image and you're working on the cron job uh, behavior. So oh, that okay. should be- Docker image is not yet done. I'm, I'm just focusing on the update, uh, GeoEP updater for now. Okay. And when I'm done with the GeoEP updater, I will uh, add the, the easy copy. And then I will go for the Elm file. Okay. Then step by step, short. and then ESC, then deploy it. Good. Um, we have a few subjects on the G about the GSOC. Uh, the main one is Hervé did propose a plan for migrating stats Jenkins IO to the new website. Looks like it's easier than we anticipated. Good news. So proposal is that we change the DNS tomorrow, if it's okay for everyone, uh, because we can do it right now with no impact. Proposal, uh, DNS migration, Wednesday we will be 11. Then I just want your advice about, so the old site is running on GitHub pages. GitHub pages is one, uh, one checkbox to enable on the GitHub repository that we, the infra team, uh, manage and administrate. We can disable it whenever we want. And also, uh, there is a branch on this repository named GH Pages. And today, there is a build that uh, fill the content and update the content of that branch. Each time the branch is updated, GitHub automatically deploys this to the G GitHub page website, which is our production. So I've asked Hervé, let's start with switching to the new website, which, run, which runs on our infrastructure. And then we disable the old GitHub web page and we rename the branch to data because it only contains data because that data is used by the new website. So we don't want to remove the whole website content. So the question is, once we have migrated, how much time before proceeding? I was thinking about a full week waiting. We switch to the new website Wednesday. Next team meeting, we discuss about, is it working? Is it okay? And everything. And if it's okay, the Wednesday, we or Hervé or both can work on, okay, let's clean up the whole thing. We keep it. We don't have to archive or anything, but we 
we clean it because the H page will be confusing once we stopped using it. Is that okay for everyone? I like that. I like that a lot. So I will already Wednesday, the 11th, be able to go to stats.jenkins.io and see the new site. And, and then the, the cleanup later um, will be, will be to me as a user transparent. I won't even detect it. Exactly. The reason why I want to wait one week for that is just in case we need to go back. If anyone mm -hmm. comes and complain or open an issue saying, hey, I'm using the old website and it's broken and whatever, thanks to Stefan proposal, which makes sense, uh, keeping it at least one week prevents uh, that kind of usage. Any objection? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we have other GSOC requests. To our work in progress, uh, we need to migrate repository, but also to give more information to the GSOC maintainer. That's not emergency. I forgot to comment it about it yesterday due to the brownout. However, I will take time for this later today or tomorrow. And there is one about Terraform that has been delayed. Uh, team is aware, I told him early, but I think it needs to be commented. Uh, that require us to create resources on the Azure Terraform project to sustain this project. So I propose uh, that we delay uh, the GSOC work priority to after the update center migration, given the uh, how confident we are. Is that okay for everyone? Okay, I will take care of communicating on each of these issues except the stats one. Any other question about the GSOC? Okay, cool. Uh, we have a, an issue about OIC auth plugin. CodeCov stopped working one month ago for a plugin maintainer. Uh, it's not an action from the Jenkins infra team. Uh, um, it's on the Jenkins CI GitHub organization, which we are not neither maintainer or admin. Uh, I gave uh, details on how to set up CodeCov to the contributor. They can do it. And ironically, there is a way to set up OIC and OIDC authentication on GitHub Action, which they use. I mean, that's literally the name of the plugin they are maintaining that allows the GitHub Action worker, so the equivalent of the Jenkins agents, and they can authenticate passwordless against the CodeCov service. So then the contributor, if they have at least right, uh, right permission or maintenance permission on the repo, they can have upload tokenless. Team Jacob confirmed there, in, there are no setup on Jenkins CI for CodeCov. So their token or their setup has been deleted somehow, but they have actions and they should be autonomous for enabling it. Please note, the infrastructure used here is GitHub Action. It's not CI Jenkins IO for that particular plugin. Mm. I'm not sure if there are C other usage on the same plugin of CI Jenkins IO or not, but they are autonomous. There is nothing we can do. We help them uh, out of courtesy. And because, yeah, honestly, I don't know how to upload code code from Jenkins. Maybe the, we have common line or whatever. Uh, that could be worth checking, but not priority. So nothing else to do on this one. It's just out of curiosity for everyone. Any question? Mm -mm. Thanks. So we have the Gradle proprietary dependency, uh, still work in progress on the Gradle side, no action expected from the team here. And finally, the build stack on Infra CI, that's one for us, I've delayed it. So when we reload the configuration or change the configuration of Infra CI, we tend to have a, a rate limit from GitHub Action. Now I didn't have time to spend on this one. We fixed most of the most important issues. Please note that the security thing, when we will change the job configuration to split the website jobs, what we mentioned earlier, this one will most probably trigger a rate limits. So we will have to deploy this change as soon as possible without, but uh, anticipating that other action won't be able to perform for one hour. Any question? 
Okay, so we have two new issues uh, incoming. Uh, one is we have a new mirror to add uh, on Get Jenkins IO, OSS Planet. Uh, I've done the prerequisite with them. They went back uh, to us last week and it looks like it's working. So we have to add it to the list and that should be okay. So thanks to them. And also we have a contributor request. Uh, we have a, a bit of work. So I will add it to the milestone. It's not top priority. I might ask you, Jay, if you can work on this one. Uh, I will give you direction though. I don't, I'm not expecting autonomy because that's a multi-steps and complex topic, but ideally that should uh, update on Packer image to add packages and a few commands. The goal is to improve the entropy that we have on the agent when running a build. It's needed for contributor working on FIPS. FIPS is a set of security uh, norms, I think. Uh, it's a set of security rules for running uh, infrastructure uh, systems and software. And that has, um, let's say, constraint on the encryption algorithm that has to be used. And as part of this algorithm, you need a random generator that generate what looks like random, but in that context might not be. So you have to increase entropy. So the randomness is increased. Otherwise you could use smart mathematics and algorithm technique to break the encryption patterns. That's why FIPS is all about mainly, clearly. So that's why they need more entropy than the default ones. Uh, that will be easy for the virtual machine agents. We install the packages, we enable the services for RNGD and FHD demons. So it's a apt get install and system CTL enable. And then when the agent starts, it starts the demon that starts the entropy generators. And that's low usage. For Kubernetes it's and Windows, it's another set of topics. So let's focus on VM agent for Linux for UJ. I will give instruction here and that's low priority. Cool, we can get started with this next week. Yeah, after the GDK 21. Yeah. Uh, that's all, just a quick check back to the calendar. We have a weekly next week. We have a baseline selection 18 uh, September and next LTS is far, far away. Uh, no security release. We have six credential uh, expiring or already expired. Uh, we have three major events still the same. Uh, one is uh, currently happening. We have Bruno speaking at that Optium Summit today. Yes, congrats Bruno. That's why he's not there. Uh, quick check on the budgets. We are uh, under the limit, uh, the expectation. Uh, as your CDF is at 3.4, we start to see the impact of moving away Redis. So that's really cool. Uh, we should be around 3.5 realistically because we remove Redis, but we will add more resource usage with the update center. So that should balance. Uh, we are same consumption rate for Azure sponsorship uh, credits till 10K. So out of credit in January for this one. And AWS, we haven't seen impact of the update center, but we should see some at the end of the month. I believe we sh if we are able to move update center in two weeks, we should be between five and 6K instead of 6.5. So we'll see uh, if we're able to do this. I haven't opened the issue describing the world, what do we move where, because we focused on the update center. If we're able to focus on the update center, we will de we'll decrease that consumption, and then we will focus on the free others. I think that's all. Is that everything for everyone? I'm five minutes late on the timing, but I try to rush a bit today. Do you have any other topic that I could have forgotten or do you want to add? Cool. So I have to thank everyone here for the help, for the work you did during the past week and you continue doing. Everyone, that's really good uh, to work with you. And I hope we will see each other next week. So for people watching us, see you next week. Bye-bye.
拜拜。